Welcome back to Coffee Talks with Avery. Today I'm here with Sam Aldock, the president of the Business Student Council. So Sam, what has this experience been like for you so far? Well, Avery, my experience as Business Student Council president has been amazing. And I was on exec for Business Student Council last year. I got to plan the homecoming events for the whole business college. And now as the president, I manage the exec team, I lead meetings, and I um, lead the whole council towards ideally another successful year. So what does that look like in leadership terms for you and especially in a group of your peers? Leading a group of my peers can be challenging because you have a lot of people who um, don't like to um, be led by someone maybe their age or maybe I have to say the hard things. And so uh, as the president, I have to um, sometimes lay down the hammer or sometimes I have to, yeah, sometimes kick people out of the organization or I will say, okay, everyone, we have to participate in homecoming this year. Um, and that can be tough because uh, you and I are both seniors. And if I were to um, be leading you and you didn't like something that um, I was doing, then you would say, well, I mean, it's just blah, blah, blah. But I mean, age, people look at age, you know, a professor says something, you're not really going to bat an eye. It's like there's that natural leadership role. Um, and so it's hard as a peer, but it's also, it can be the opposite, very rewarding. People can listen to you and they want to engage with you more because they know you and you're their age and you know um, the culture of, I know the culture of people around 21, 22, 23 years old. Um, I know um, how to say things. I'm more technologically focused. Um, and leading a group of my peers uh, is a lot of fun because you're friends with everyone pretty much. And so I, it's hard to be friends with someone who grew up uh, in the 80s or something like that because I can't say, oh, you know, I, I got the pinball machine and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it's challenging and rewarding in the sense that you can make friends, challenging in the sense that, um, yeah, not everyone's going to like what you have to say and it's hard to listen to someone who you see as a peer. Um, and it can be fun because I love being around Spear students and people my age in general. Wow, sounds like you've learned a lot. So what does leadership mean to you? So leadership is not what people would expect, Avery. Leadership is um, not service. It's not um, doing something. Anyone like you, Avery, let's say, okay, Avery, I want to be a leader. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean you telling me what to do? Does that mean before this interview, you're like, okay, uh, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then I'm going to talk to Sam Alabac, and then um, we're going to get this done. Anybody can accomplish a goal. Anybody can tell someone to do something. A leader inspires and has followers. And so there are um, leaders who have used um, their influence for good and for bad. Um, there are dictators in this world who are actually great leaders because they have amassed a lot of followers. Their influence is, um, you can tell that they have influence over a country or an organization or a club or a family. Um, and or, well, or a good lead, or you can use um, that influence and your follower base um, to encourage and to inspire. And so a leader inspires change, whether it be uh, good or bad is up to you. Um, and so a leader isn't someone who, in my mind, uh, just serves or does things, uh, but it's one who has followers um, and who can get those followers to be uh, directed, aligned towards a goal, and then to achieve that goal in a set time frame. Yeah. Wow. That's really wise. So what did you do from freshman year to now to kind of learn all of that and gain these rules? Yeah. Um, what have I done since freshman year up until now to um, become uh, a leader? Well, I started out being in the president's leadership council. And so that is a class that you take every week, every Tuesday for a year. And you get paired up with your peers in a family. And then you get um, some facilitators who are older than you. I had a junior and a senior. And they facilitated the discussion, guided us through our freshman year. Um, and we took classes 
on how to be an ethical leader. Um, what does leadership mean? Um, how does your identity fit in your leadership? And through that, I wanted to get involved. And so um, even though it was 2020 and you really couldn't do much, like we would be wearing masks right now and it would just be impersonal, it wouldn't be my favorite. Throughout the years, that has gone away and so now we can have these leadership experiences. What I'm trying to say is even despite the masks and the impersonal relationships I had with like professors because it was all online, you know, uh, I, OSU still gives you the opportunity to say yes and to try new things. And so um, despite the restrictions, I was involved in Junior Greek Leadership, uh, PLC, I joined a fraternity and um, got involved there. I was a senator for Spears in SGA and um, I ended up directing like a winning Folly show that next year I did varsity review. I um, tried to, I started the juggling club, co-started with four other guys um, and we just kind of met outside because no one was meeting. And um, yeah, also just like talking to people and meeting people, that's um, how you can learn how to um, be a better leader. I mean you have to say yes to things that make you uncomfortable. So Avery, maybe doing an interview like this is making you a little uncomfortable. That is gonna be so much better for you growing as um, a leader than it is to do something that you're familiar with. So uh, through all that, I poured into what I wanted to do and what I like to do. So okay, I liked Junior Greek Leadership. Mm -hmm. So I applied and became the coordinator. I liked PLC, President's Leadership Council, so I applied and became a facilitator. I liked, I wanted to be involved in the business college, so I applied for business student council so I could make change and meet other people and be more uncomfortable and grow in other areas professionally in Spears. And um, so I joined business student council. And I loved business student council so much that I was on the exec team my junior year, planning the homecoming for the college, and then now I'm serving as the president. And so as a senior, I, I'm only involved in like a few things, but Business Student Council is the most I'm involved with. I love Spears. Um, I love the professors here, the relationships I've made, the people, the organization, the drive people have for success and for um, not just success, but um, innovation and research. And um, there are just some good people here. And so I, I wanted to pour my time into Spears and that's kind of what I've been doing out of all those relationships, uh, accumulating different ones, making yourself uncomfortable, um, trying new things, saying yes, especially your freshman and sophomore year, and then figuring out what you really want to do and then honing in on it. And I've tried to do that right now. And now I'm sitting next to you. So there you go. So you said with being in business student council, you wanted to start change. What does that look like? And how do you think you've accomplished that? Yeah, actually, when I joined business student council, I wanted to like be part of change, but everyone wants to be a part of change. Mm -hmm. And that's so ambiguous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is I mean, like, you know, you're growing up, I want to be a part of change. I want to be a part of a movement. You know, everyone wants to base themselves off of an ideology or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I wanted to uh, be involved in change. Mm -hmm. I joined business student council and we're coming off of COVID and Honestly, I didn't really know what Business Student Council did. And I would assume that anybody who is watching this interview right now does not know a clue about what Business Student Council does. So um, here's how Business Student Council can enact change. So we serve with Into the Streets every year. We help out with Our Daily Bread, Habitat for Humanity. We also bring in speakers from CEOs of Fortune 500 companies to talk to our student council. What we're gonna be doing next semester and what we used to be doing as business student council is having those speakers be open to the entire business college. So hopefully having at least one of those speakers come next semester and be present to everyone. We vote on teacher of the month, so you get to make one, uh, or professor of the month, you get to make one professor feel really good and congratulate them, which is a lot of fun. We meet with the dean once a month for lunch, and we are the students who get to primarily talk to the administration and the faculty 
And so our goal as an organization, because every college actually has a student council, um, is to, and every one of those goals are similar, or mission statements, you could say. Ours is to um, partner with students and faculty to make their relationships um, more important, more prevalent, more engaging, and to um, enhance the student relationships uh, made between students at Spears, between those faculty and their professors, and to um, also serve um, the student body of Spears and make Business College the premier college at Oklahoma State University. Yeah, so those are some of the things that Business Student Council does, just some things, but we also, um, we do a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I can't exactly talk about, but I can say that when uh, there's something called like the Dean's Council, they meet once a year and they talk to one student a year and that student is me. And so okay. all of the like 150, 190 big wigs, uh, faculty members, the dean, CEOs, all this kind of stuff, I get to talk to them for five minutes and update them on the entire student body population of Spears and how they're doing and updates on six, over 6,000 students. And so I was on uh, a Zoom call the other day with a former business student council president mm -hmm. who uh, is now uh, getting his MBA at Harvard. He um, was telling me, hey, so uh, how is it? Uh, representing over 6,000 students at Spears. I go, what? Huh? And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah. You know that's your job, right? I was like, really? Because when I joined Business Student Council, I thought it was just a semi-elite social club, when actually um, we have the power and the privilege to talk to the dean and to uh, say what we want to say and to hopefully make change. So one more example okay, I have a problem with a professor, or uh, I'm not big on this class. Uh, we get to talk to the dean, and that goes straight to him versus complaining about it generally in a setting. You can talk to someone in BSC who can talk to me or anyone on the exec team or anyone, and they can go talk to the dean and tell him, and that's like straight to the horse's mouth. So, um, I mean, that's one way to uh, see change in Spears. But change is ambiguous. Change can happen, um, but hopefully that made it a little more... Uh, yeah, clear. So what is your biggest goal being the representative of 6,000 students? <clears throat> my biggest goal is, my biggest goal as the representative of 6,000 students is to um, enhance, well, to play out our mission. So um, my goal is to do the best job that I can as a leader of these 6,000 students and represent the student body and enhance student and faculty relationships and make the business college the premier college at Oklahoma State University. Uh, I try to achieve that by um, advocating for more funding for student organizations. So Business Student Council actually is the one that allocates all of the money that goes to every Spears organization. Mm -hmm. So Spears Ambassadors, Brand Squad, Marketing Club, all of these clubs get money from SGA, but it comes through us. So we say, mm -hmm. okay, uh, this person wants X amount of dollars, we will give them X amount of dollars. And so um, recently I've been asking for people to donate to Philanthropy, and that money will go to Homecoming, um, and it'll go to other student organization uh, clubs. And our goal is 5,000 by November 28th, and um, it's the first time we've ever done this, so hopefully we can reach that because uh, Student Government Association only gives us so much money, and mm -hmm. we're already fighting for more money, and I don't think um, they realize that uh, we need more because Spears is growing exponentially. If you look at the mm -hmm. rates, uh, the student population, we're becoming the largest college. If we're not, we are the largest college right now, and so um, we'll just need more funds, and so I've been advocating behind the scenes for that. Uh, but how do I lead 6,000 students? You can't lead 6,000 students by like, I can't talk to 6,000 students. So I have to talk to those who can talk to the student population. So mm -hmm. the dean and me, we talk, or I'm talking to the advisory board for Spears, and then they talk to the vice president of student affairs or something. Mm -hmm. And then that person talks to all the professors, and the professors engage them in class. Or I talk to someone who is helping with um, coffee with Avery, <laughs> and then you get a note saying, okay, well, this is what we're trying to do, or hey, we have more funding now, we can do X, Y, Z. So 
I cannot. It's not. It's not for the leader at the top, of the top, because I don't. I'm just like you. I'm just like everybody else. So no more different. Uh, I just have different responsibilities, but it trickles down to everyone else. So mm-hmm. I really shouldn't be engaging with everyone. I should be engaging with those who can uh, ask others to do the same. That's really great. So I hear you're also an economics major. How does all this uh, leadership and all these roles that you've had contributed to your professional career? Well, I am currently um, loving my economics classes. But how will my economics classes contribute to my career? Um, It's in an unconventional way. And so economics majors only make up around less than 140 students out of over uh, what I believe the numbers are 6,207 Spears students. So a little less than 1% um, of the student population or a little over 1%, 2%, I think. And so we're the smallest by far. Um, what being what an economics major, just being an economics major, has um, given me a math-focused skill set that I can also use um, in a quantitative um, and qualitative theoretical perspective. So I'm taking public finance right now, and by calculating and using graphs um, and supply and demand. And I'm just breaking it down to the base levels, you can say, okay, so how much money should the government of the state of Oklahoma allocate towards school districts? So it's not just accounting where it's like numbers and you punch them in and then you, okay, someone can take that and then make change. It's like, okay, based off of, uh, yeah, our theoretical mathematical processes that we're going through through the class and through looking at graphs and trends and scrutinizing that data, you can say, well, okay, this is what I think we should do with it. Um, And that can be used in a lot of business aspects. But for my career, Avery, I'm actually gonna be a teacher with AmeriCorps for two years. I'm gonna be going to um, Notre Dame for grad school, and I'll be studying there during the summers in South Bend, and then I'll be a full-time teacher at a rural Catholic school somewhere in the United States for two years. And, it's all paid for, which is really great. I had to apply in the spring. Uh, but my economics major will be useful because I will most likely be teaching math and or social studies. And so if you are an economics major, you need to know the history of kind of what's been going on, and you need to know the functions and how to apply them. And so I can use those in the classroom. And with my leadership experience that I've gained just by um, saying yes to things and by being uncomfortable, and by um, taking opportunities, the many opportunities that OSU gives, um, I can um, be in front of people and learn public speaking skills and how to present myself and how to present uh, my findings or how to sell oneself to the classroom. And so, um, yeah, it's all coming together for me to be a teacher for two years, and I'm excited to see kind of where that goes. So even though I won't be teaching economics, Um, I could be teaching elementary, middle school, or high school. Uh, I will be using um, not only the technical skills that I've used, but overall, all of the experiences I've had at OSU, I get to use in the classroom by talking and building relationships with those students. Sounds like you've learned a lot being here at OSU and at Spears. Do you have any power of personal moments from Spears? Do I have any power of personal moments at Spears? I have so many power of personal moments. I'll narrow them down to one. Okay. For you, Avery, just for you. Thank you. But you have to clink this with me, and we're going to say power personal. So three, two, one. Power personal. Power personal. My power of personal moment was actually talking to Avery before this interview. And so um, I have had relationships with professors and students, but what I love, Avery, um, answering your questions, but before this, I got to talk to you and I got to meet you. And um, I got to sit down and, yeah, even though you're interviewing me, I got to semi-interview you Mm -hmm. and make you a little more comfortable, hopefully, made me more comfortable, I know that, Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, And I got to realize that you have a role and that's, you're interviewing me. I'm the interviewee. However, we are more than just a role. You're more than just this objective. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to know you as a person. 
outside of even our business setting. So with the power of personal, when you go into a business and you have a boss or you have an employee, like a fellow peer employee relationship, you can just keep that as, okay, let's just talk business. I could have just come in here and answered your questions and left. Or, and what I would rather have is to actually meet you because I'm excited to meet you. And I'm excited to meet the people behind the camera and um, yeah, make it a personal relationship because it's inviting, it's fun, it um, makes you feel um, seen and known and that's what everyone wants in life. And when you can relate that into a business setting, Maybe your customer or your client wants a personal relationship and maybe that's, they feel more comfortable of saying yes to a sale or um, listening to you in a presentation. And so um, my power of personal moment is uh, meeting you, Avery, beforehand and uh, maybe just like meeting everyone else behind the camera today. Um, but I guess I'll give you a small little extra note. Dr. Gady is retiring uh, this year, and she's been teaching economics at Oklahoma State for over, I believe, 30 years. And um, I see her, I've had her for three semesters in a row. I see her outside um, of class, and I make that relationship with her. And she's teaching me how to be um, a better teacher or to prepare for grad school. She wrote one of my rec letters kindly. And um, yeah, I see her outside of the classroom. And having a, someone who's older than me, who's <laughs> wiser than me, and not just a college age mind like us, uh, is a great way to, um, yeah, end college and know that I have a friend and a professor and uh, someone who I can ask questions to and answer honestly. Um, and so she's a really great friend, great teacher, and I think Dr. Gra Dr. Gady is great. And uh, I think everyone should meet her before she retires in the spring. Oh. I'm honored to have been your power for a small <laughs> moment. Thank you so much for joining me today, Sam. And we'll catch you guys next time. Coffee Talks with Avery. Go Pokes. Thank you.